Hey, Chris, how much was your uh, first uh, wholesale deal? 6 k $6,000. And where yep. did it come from? It came from um, uh, cold calling a realtor. Both were cold calling a realtor, yes. Cold calling a realtor. Boom. Welcome to the Wholesale to Million family, you guys. What up? I hope you guys are having a good, uh, a good day. I was going to say Friday. Today it's not Friday. But I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, today, we're back with another subscriber first wholesale deal interview. Um, you guys, throughout this video, if, you, um, if it add any value to you, if you'd like me to continue doing this and, and you like this kind of content, please show me some love, show their guests some love and some support, smash the thumbs up and comment below and let me know what's the one takeaway you got from this video and any other question you have, just comment below and then Chris and I will be able to uh, um, answer it, okay? Now, before I hand it over to Chris, I want those of you to know or that don't know, I am running a 2K web class happen on October 26th, all right, where I'll take on 20 people to spend a whole entire day with you, and I'll share with you all the tools, all the tips, all the strategies, all the company, all of our entire business system right now, that's what we're currently using right now, okay, so you can help um, systemize your business and take it to the next level, um, and that, that does cost $2,000 per person. Or per couple. So maybe you have a business partner. So if you're ready, shoot an email over to wholesale to millions at gmail.com and I'm ready to rock and roll with you. But now that's out of the way. Chris, you guys help me welcome Chris. What's going on, bro? What's going on, brother? It's a pleasure to be here, man. I've uh I followed you since since your beginnings. No and, way, uh, bro. Since the first video? Man, since you're I mean, you are getting probably like you know, you were like 20, 20 likes a video, dude. I mean, it was, it was at the beginning. <laughs> Chris, I, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for your time to jump on. I know you're ready to drop some bombs. Me too. So um, let's hear a little bit about your story, bro. I'm excited, dude. Yeah, man. Well, um, uh, initially I just, I come from, uh, you know, humble beginnings. I, uh, I started out in, in my working career, um, you know, 19 years old, getting involved into, you know, network marketing, multi-level marketing, stuff like that. So I think that's kind of where the foundation was set. Um, just kind of learning, you know, how to be, how to conduct business, how to be an entrepreneur, things like that. So I, I would say that's where I kind of learned those things. Um, as time went on, I'm 33 now, as time went on, I, you know, I was working odd jobs and, you know, stuff that we all do and, uh, sales jobs and things like that. Um, my father, he, he always was a, a buy and hold guy for real estate. So I always kind of watched him, uh, growing up, you know, he was a landlord and, you know, I always would be in the car with him when he pulled up and to his tenants to collect rent. So I was just one, I was, was curious about real estate. So I guess that seed was planted early. Okay, gotcha, man. So, so Chris, so nineteen, you you, you like uh, you go to college or anything like that? Yeah, well, I went to some colleges, city college stuff like that, and um, you know, like I said, my first few regular jobs was like Best Buy, you know, sales <laughs> positions. Um, yeah. I I actually worked at a solar company mm. where I was a cold caller, and uh, you know, it was probably like. 30 people on the floor. We were waking up early in the morning, calling customers, trying to set up appointments to get them to buy our solar units. Mm. Um, so I started that about like 20 years old and I was really good at it. Uh, promoted really fast within a company. So I, I, in essence, I went from a cold caller in that company to, I was, I guess you can say like an acquisitions person or like a hot data person that dealt yeah. with more warm, warm leads. Um, but in the back of my mind, I was always wondering who was running this, who, who, who was head, who was head of this? Because every time we would, I would set up a, an appointment, you know, we would get a bonus and we would ring the gong and everything. But I would see that these 35, $40,000 units were sold. So I was like, wow, somebody's actually reaping the benefits of, you know, us setting up the lead. So it was in the back of my mind, uh, like, man, I, you know, something big can be uh, achieved. Gotcha, man. So, uh, uh, Chris, when did you initially got into real estate? Last year. Last okay. year. Last year was my uh, was my launch, pretty much, man. Like I said, I was working a job, 
that uh, I just, man, it was so stressful. And I came across, um, I was I was on YouTube at work and a, a wholesale ad came across my screen, dude. And I, I clicked the link and I fell into the rabbit hole. It, I believe at the time it was, uh, this was last year, 2018, around August, August, end of August, early, end of August, beginning of September. Um, and I clicked the link and I think it was a wholesale, wholesale ink. It was a wholesale ink ad. Mm, and okay. the, the very first person I saw in that interview was Max. It was Max Maxwell. And he was telling his story on how, you know, he, he got his, you know, he was at, he was at zero and he was, he drove for dollars and he came across his first house and he put it under contract and it was 17 grand, I believe if I, if I'm, if I'm correct, but I just always remember him saying you're one deal away, you know, you're one deal away from, from that, uh, from that, you know, that check change in your life. Absolutely, man. For those of you who's listening that don't know who the guy is, <laughs> dude you must be living under a rock max maxwell if you, if you guys um uh, just dude the guy's legit and he adds so much value to the community so if you haven't subscribed to his channel or follow him on instagram man like you need to go do that thing asap but um yes anyways uh chris so you discovered back in august okay mm -hmm. and i i also want those of you that's listening if you're in a sales job if you have that salesman skills dude this game is perfect for you because if you have that skill you will dude if you're willing to put in the the effort the work the grind skiller like you will dominate it okay so august of 2018 so chris so you were did you you know, so kind of tell me kind of share with me through the journey bro you go to okay. any events or, or anything like that no man uh so so yeah my my whole journey was everything was through youtube so after i stumbled upon uh max i started i started following max and i was uh, you know i was loving his content and then i ran across i came across you yeah i came across you around september yeah around september like the next very shortly after that i came across you and i mean you were just dude like the gems you drop you're so raw like you you break it down for us. You break it down for us step by step. Um, I remember just like uh, literally just I would be at my station and I, everything you were saying, I was just writing down, writing down. I was like a madman. People were looking at me like, what are you doing? You know, like and uh, and I just I just remember just being so much on fire for it because I knew it was real. I was like, oh, this is real. This is really real. And, um, you know, seeing everybody, you know, um, being on your channel and telling their testimonials and how they did $10,000 checks and, you know, whatever amount of uh, $17,000 checks. And I was like, wow, this is real. I know I can do this. So I, I mean, I locked myself, I locked myself away for like a month and a half, dude, um, in my room, just learning everything I can know about wholesaling and what it takes, what contract I need. Um, okay, what's a cash buyer? Uh, what is an assignment? Like just everything you need to know. So I just kind of just returned to a madman. And then um, I, I started locking up deals under contract. And um, like you said, you fail forward. You like, you make, you, you make mistakes as you go. But I remember like every step of the process that I was going through, I would refer back to you. Like whatever step I was at within like locking them up, or okay, what's the next title company? I would always revert back to you, like, okay, what does Kong do? So I would just like, as I'm going through the process, I would always revert back to you, man. So you are you are always a big help. Oh, dude, Chris, thank you so much for the kind word, man. I really, really appreciate it. But those of you listening, I'm telling you, man, there are some great, great people out there that are actually adding a ton of value. So just like Chris said, if if you starting out with very little money, you're trying to learn this, watch some YouTube video. I I what I do suggest is I don't overwhelm yourself, find one or two people that you like, and then just dive into the information. Because otherwise, you know, when you're learning from so many people, the materials, like the information gets all mixed up and because it, 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 you don't know which, which path to really take. Um, so now, Chris, let's talk, about your, um, let's talk about your first deal, bro. Okay. Um, well, the first deal. Before that, let's talk. I, I want to talk about, there was a, there was a, big deal that I had under contract 
It was okay. it was it was before my first deal. It was a fifty okay. k contract. Woo! Fifty k assignment. Fifty k assignment fee. He was a, uh, and it was a, uh, it was a referral. Uh, it was a referral, and I got this referral from another. I had another property under contract, and I, and I was I was out with a friend, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to renegotiate uh, uh, this contract. This this con. Uh, my my number down uh, with uh with the seller that i had locked up too high so i was going i was talking to my friend and i was like well is what what should i say to this person to get him the price drop and one of my friends had overheard my conversation i was at a bar and he overheard my conversation and he was like hey man you you're in you're you're in the real estate and i was like uh yeah man he was like i have a cousin in san francisco uh his uh his his parents, uh, he has power of attorney. Both of his parents are, um, are sick. So he has power of attorney and, and they're in pre foreclosure. They need to sell the house immediately. So fast forward, I, I talked to the guy, I locked the house up under contract and, um, I was looking to, I locked it up under contract for seven fifty. I had a buyer at eight Oh five. This is in San Francisco. I never saw the house, anything like that. Um, so I had sent my cash buyer over there. They they walked the property. They liked it. They were getting ready to put down a twenty five thousand dollar non refundable, non refundable. Um, and right before I sent the assignment fee, after they walked it, I sent the assignment fee, and they they backed out. Though they tried to renegotiate me, they said, "Oh, hey, they did their little tactic to where they tried to renegotiate me down." Um, and the deal just the deal kind of fell apart and the and the guy ended up um the guy ended up um uh getting the house foreclosed on so it was at the time it was like a big heartbreak man but, but i just kept going um now fast forward wait to my wait. to my first deal wait 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 um, chris which which your initial question. chris let me help you mm -hmm. out bro let me help yeah. you out bro so the buy walked through that property, mm -hmm. was ready to go, but they saw your assignment mm -hmm. fee and didn't want to buy it. No, they didn't see the assignment fee yet. They had walked the property. Uh huh. Uh, they had walked the property and they said, okay, cool. Go ahead, send over your contract and then we'll get that non refundable. And when I was talking to them, it was probably like 7 p.m. at night. Okay. So they were saying, go ahead, send us an assignment contract and then we'll get that $25,000 over. In, uh, into the title company first thing in the morning. Well, um, as I was, uh, you know, uh, doctoring up my assignment contract on my computer to go ahead and email over to them, I get a text literally probably like 15 minutes later saying, hey, uh, yeah, that 805 number that, you know, we're not going to be able to do that. He actually came up like drastically lower to, I mean, he, he his offer dropped from 805 to under under what I had it under contract for. He wanted to like some ridiculous number, dude. So it, it it kind of fell apart. And um, like I said, it was it was a learning experience. Yeah, man. So the thing is, I, I, you know, um, everybody that's listening, maybe they maybe we can add something here that that, that people can learn from. So the buyer is ready to go at at the 80, now. How do you find this buyer? Through a realtor. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. So the realtor went out and walked the property with the buyer. Yeah, the 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 realtor, uh, my friend who's a realtor, she has a lot of cash buyers mm. in in San Francisco. So, you know, we were gonna do a deal. We were gonna do a, a deal. I was gonna pay, her, you know, pay her, pay her fine a, a fee, it was right? A, a fee, and um and uh, yeah, it was they they walked it, and then the guy, I guess he had ran some numbers, I don't know, to where he said, oh, you know we're not going to be able to get involved at 805. We thought we were, but we weren't based on some recent comps in the market that we just pulled. So it was, I don't know. It was kind of fishy, man. But Sure. Sure. Okay. So, so what was, what was, what was the new price that they gave you? The new price was, uh, they were at 685. Okay. So 685. Uh, and I suppose, uh, I suppose Chris, you went back and you renegotiate with the seller. Yeah, I, I did, but he he owed six seventy five on it. So I mean, it, it, the deal it really was like, you know, 
there really wasn't a, a deal to be had because he owed six seventy five on the house. The the sellers they owed six seventy five okay. on it. Um, like I said, I had it under contract for seven fifty, so he was gonna walk away with what is that seventy five k something mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Um, so at that number that my buyer renegotiated, he came back at six eighty five. It just wasn't gonna work. I wasn't gonna make any money, and my seller for sure wasn't gonna walk away with. Right, but right, but right, but the thing is that the house is gonna go in. The house is gonna go in uh, pre uh, foreclosure anyway, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, there were a lot. Yeah, there were a lot of moving parts to it. Um, the the so his mom had stage four dementia. The mm. the seller, and it was in question. She took out like a second mortgage on the house, right? So he was trying to like renegotiate with i guess like the mortgage he was trying yep. to renegotiate it down i'm sorry you still there yep yep yeah he, he tried to renegotiate it down well, i guess the mortgage company because he he was uh trying to argue that it was in question his mom's mental state when she had t- took out that second loan so he was trying to create a little more equity for sure. himself too so with all that happening we we ran out of time and mm. they closed <laughs> i mean the bank came and took it so it was just one of those things. I just, it was, a, it was a, even though I didn't reap the benefits from it, it was a very, very, very uh, important thing that happened to me because it, it just, it just opened my eyes to the whole process and how sure. you need to move differently. You know? Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, yes, man. I mean, we, we can, we can absolutely learn from every single deal. I, I'm just saying that the seller owes, 675 is going to go into pre pre foreclosure. They're going to lose the house. Their credit is going to be trash. They're not going to get any money anyway. And the buyer, if they're solid to go at 685, if that's the only buyer you got, and that is a 10K, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just saying that's a 10K. It helps whoever it is out of, out of you know, being, uh, you know, their, mm-hmm. their credit being yeah. gone. The buyer gets the deal. And then, you know, and then uh, you also get paid for it. Maybe you give, the seller, maybe a thousand, two thousand, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. I'm just saying, those of you that are, are listening, what you need to do is do everything you can. You know, like do what you you do what you think your 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 time is worth. If you don't think that your time is worth to get a deal done and make 10k, then then not. But I'm saying that on a deal, you need to do whatever you can, and if it works, great. If it doesn't work, you already know that you did everything you possibly can. So, anyways. So, um, I mean, this same d- dude, we have the same situation with John, which is my first student. And he said, Colin, we've tried everything, tried everything, same, same issue. Um, the seller was going to go in pre foreclosure. I guess the seller didn't, the seller rather give the property away to the bank than walk away with a thousand bucks. Cause they're like, oh, it's not even worth it. I'm not going to give somebody, you know. So, anyways, but I, what I'm sure trying to say the whole thing is do what you can if you feel like it's worth it your time to get it done, to make X amount and do it. If not, then obviously, um, then just let it go. So Chris, let's talk about your, now let's, let's go into your first deal, man. So after now, listen, I know my, I I, like, I got deal falls apart too. And Mm -hmm. it's, it like, it really drained you. So Mike Mm -hmm. did. So after that deal falls apart, bro, what happened? Yeah, I, uh, it was, uh, it was a blow. You know, I mean, 55,000 or 50,000, yeah. you know, it's a blow. Um, but it didn't get me, it didn't get me off course really, because I mm. saw, even though it didn't close, mm. I, I, I was proud of myself that I had got far enough in the process. So it just, it just gave me more, you know, gasoline to add to the fire. So I kept it moving, man. Um, and then, like you said, fast forward to my first deal, um, which was in uh, July. July uh, 11th. That's when we closed, and that was uh, for a six k assignment fee. And that was that was from I would come home after work, and um, after work, you know, I would go. I would either go jogging through the neighborhood or I would ride my bike. So one day I just decided I'm gonna ride ride my bike for dollars, literally. <laughs> I mean that's how hungry I was, dude. So. I rode my bike around, uh, you know, the area in which I live. And, uh, I, you know, I came across like 10 abandoned homes. Like I just, you know, wrote them down on my list and to skip trace later and whatever. So I came across this one house that's like literally right by my house. And 
I, I never, I didn't get, I didn't skip trace it. I wrote it down. It was on my list of uh, one of the houses to skip trace. I never got a hold of the homeowner. And then probably about around two weeks later, three weeks later, I see a for sale sign in front. I'm like, oh shoot. Mm. Like, a, you know, a realtor got to it. Dang. Yeah. So I call this realtor and I ask him, you know, I was asking him about that property. Um, hey man, you know, I basically, you know, I pitched him. Uh, you, you know, you, would you be willing to, uh, we'll do all cash offer. You can keep all the commissions, you know, the, the thing that you teach us. And, um, so he said, Hey man, yeah, this house is getting ready to close for penny right now, but I have another home, a pocket listing. Mm. I was like, okay, great. So he sent me the address and it actually turns out that it's one of my abandoned homes that I have on my list that I have already wrote. I was like, man, that's a trip. That's gotta be God. Dude, right. So, so. I, I, we, we go to the house. It's, I mean, this house is like a, a drug house, dude. I mean, syringe needles, boarded up. I mean, it's bad. I got videos of it, man. But um, yeah, I mean, it was, a, it, that was my first deal in July and that was uh, for 6K. It was uh, very, very smooth. It was with a realtor. It was a very smooth transaction. Um, um, my buyers came through really quick. He walked the property six minutes. He was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll take it," and we were we were closing very very shortly after that. That was a really smooth one. Um, I wouldn't get ahead of myself too much, but a month and a half later, that's when when I closed the fifty thousand dollar assignment fee. Um, um, and the date on that was like three days ago. Yeah, was- bro. So yeah, so Chris closed his first deal. For six k, and then sent me a a veto of another check for like what fifty some g. Fifty fifty on a dot. <laughs> I made up for that first go deal. Yeah, there there you go, bro. There you go, bro. Player now. So hey, okay. So let's talk about. Uh, so Chris, uh, where are you based out of, bro? Uh, California, Sacramento. Sacramento, California. So okay. So let's talk about these. Let's talk about the numbers really quick here. So on the yes, first sir. deal chat with the realtor obviously built a relationship and he said he has a pocket listing for you now what was the what was the asking price uh, the asking price was um uh, it was a, a once he wanted 175 at first 175 and then what did you end up uh, talking to the agent and got a lockup on contract for Oh yeah, I I, I, were, I pulled comps in the area and uh, just the condition of the house, man. I I anchored low, I anchored low. Um, I came back. He went at one seventy five. I came at like one forty. Okay. Uh, one forty. Um, he, they came back and countered at uh, uh, one one six five, one sixty five, and then we ended up at one sixty. Okay. Now at this time, when you're talking to with the agents, have you walked the property yet? No, I haven't. Uh, nope. Okay. You haven't seen the property. Okay. So never met the agent either. Good man. So I, I don't think I have done an interview where a deal was struck like this through an agent. I might, I, 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 I don't recall. So this is a very good learning one for everyone that is listening. So l- listen closely here. So, okay. So what's, what's the ARV bro? The ARV on that house was two, uh, two sixty. Okay, so two sixty, mm-hmm. asking price. Yeah. and at this time, Chris, you were dealing with you were dealing straight back and forth with the agent, right? You you don't have no connection with the mm-hmm. seller, right? I never talked to him once, not the seller, no. Gotcha, man. Okay, so you guys end up locking it up in a contract at one sixty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, um, how many bedroom and bathroom is the house? This is three one. Okay, square footage. Uh, this one was. Right at a thousand, like a thousand, thousand fifty. Okay, so thousand fifty square feet. I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to ask Chris all the questions that you guys might have. Okay, now when you're working with this realtor, um, which contract did you use to lock it up on a contract? Great question. Um, yeah, so you know I have my assignment contract, but I didn't use my assignment contract. Matter of fact. I, I've, I've yet to uh, close a deal with my assignment contract yet. I use the car agreement, the, the, the standard real estate contract that they use. So um, I remember I, this is, this is from just from going back to you. 
uh, and re- like, okay, if I'm going to deal with a realtor, what do I need to do? And I remember you saying, put your name with and slash or sign next to it. And I, that's exactly what I did. And I let them know, hey, we just might be taking a different name at closing just for tax purposes. Like those were my exact words. It was good to go. <laughs> good, man. So Chris, so you didn't put it in. So at this time, you did, did, did you have an LC set up or are or you locking under uh, your personal name? Okay, you lock it up yep. under with your personal name you, and mm-hmm. or a sign, and then mm-hmm. you use the realtor contract. Yes, sir. Now, did the realtor um, did the realtor say that hey, you're gonna use my contract, or 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 did you pitch to use your contract? No, he just off. He he just he he brought up the, he brought up well, who's gonna be signing, and I already knew that he was gonna be ready to use the the his real real estate contract. But I, at that time, I had already tuned into you and when I was going to run into this issue. So it wasn't even an issue. I, was, I already yeah. knew what I was saying. Gotcha, man. And then how many, um, so how long was uh, the contract locked up for? Um, I locked it up for 30 days. Okay. You lock it up for 30 days. Now, oh, okay. When you talk to the realtor, obviously the realtor is going to bring up the inspection period, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how long did you have for inspection period? I did. It was 12 day. Okay. Now, did the realtor pitch that or you pitched that? I did. Okay. You know, just because, you know, I, I, I let them know, Hey man, this, this house, uh, it, it needs a lot of work. And, you know, I just want to make sure we, you know, get my guys there to make sure we, we, we cross all our, uh, you know, our X's and O's and stuff like that. So. Gotcha, man. And then obviously there's going to be, um, earnest money. How much do you put down as for an earnest money? Well, I put no money down personally. Um, I, I, he, he, uh, put my name on the contract, uh, mm-hmm. and slash or sign. And, uh, we, 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 record, we, we, uh, recorded that at that time. I already had my buyers ready to go pretty much. So, you know, they, once, once he, once he, you know, he walked it, he, he put, I made him put down, um, uh, what was it? He put down a 4%, well, 4% of, uh, what was it? My, it was 166. So he put about, I think it was like 8K. He okay, put like so 8K. Hold on a I'm like, okay. my numbers might be off, but I think it was like 8K at the time. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So hold on a second. But on the, on, on the, on the realtor's contract where it said uh, deposit, the, it said uh, 3,000. It said 3,000, but my, my buyer's earnest money fulfilled that, if that makes any sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, so, so for those that's, that's listening, so, so Chris, so when you deal with the realtor, Obviously, they're going to be earnest money, right? The, the realtor is not going to let you put no earnest money. So the realtor did talk to you about the whole earnest situation, and you put in three thousand dollars for the earnest money. Yeah, he put that in there. That's the number he came up with. I didn't even come up with that number. He just came up with that number. Okay, so normally it's about one percent of the purchase price. I think normally that that's what the realtor likes to see is one percent of the purchase price. So let me see here. Let me see if that, so it was under contract for 160. Mm-hmm. Dude, he wants it more. So, okay, so he puts that in. Um, did he talk to you about it or did he just put it in the contract? Yeah, he, um, man, what, I can't remember if he had brought it up to me. He was a really cool guy, man, real cool kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember if he brought it up or he just put it in there, but nonetheless, it was there. But I, it wasn't anything that I was worried about just because I knew that, um, you know, my guys were going to have to put down a non-refundable. Sure, sure. The reason why I brought this up for those that are going to deal with the realtor, obviously the earnest money is going to be brought up, right? And um, Proof of funds as well. Yeah, because a lot of times what it is is that, you know, some of you are listening and saying, well, Kong, I don't have $3,000, right? So that's why I'm asking these questions. So, Chris, you mentioned that did the realtor also ask for proof of funds from you or no? He did. He did. Okay, and how did you go about it? I, I'm 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 getting a hold of my buyer saying, "Hey, I need proof of funds. If you're a real cash buyer, I need you to submit proof of funds if you want this property." Okay, now pro- I, I'm sure that at this time you already built you already built the relationship with your cash buyer, right? It's not like yes. a new cash buyer, right? Um, no. Okay. No, the, well, this guy what this guy was a new cash buyer. Yes. So, you know, in essence, when you're talking to somebody new, you want to make sure that they're not another wholesaler mm. or, you know, things like that. So if, you, if they're a real cash buyer, they, they won't have an issue of 
proof of funds or wherever they're getting their money from. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So, okay. So the $3,000 and then once you lock it up on a contract, you got 12 days for inspections. For those of you who's working with realtors, listen, the key thing you need to have in the agreement, whether they use the MLS or not, I used to freak out when I first started, man, I used to freak out, dude. They, they sent over, I said, oh my God, a freaking high school dropout. I, I don't understand this. You know, there's so, so many pages. I hate it. I said, like, oh my God, I can't do this. And I was so afraid, bro. I was so afraid for a very long time. I passed on a lot of deals because I was so afraid to sign anything because I, like, I, hate, I can't read. I, I read it. I'm not going to understand it. I, I'm not going to sign something, right? Like, there's so much. So, dude, I was like, I was like no way. So, but then over time, I got over that. Now I sign it, dude, without all, all I need to check is just like, okay, my name and our sign. And then there needs to be an inspection contingent. That's all I look for. As long as get that in there, I'm cool. I'm like, I'm like, they said yeah. over electronic. I just sign, 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 sign. Because as long as you have an inspection clause in there, you, you have that yeah. time period to back out for any reason. You do not need to hire an inspector. You don't need to do anything. You can just call the agent and say, hey, today I feel the blue. So I'm not, I have no clue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow this thing. Like you don't need any kind of excuses. As long as you're within that time inspection period, like, you're, like, 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 like you can back out, get your earnest money back, no problem. I mean, we, we dealt with property that are bigger where, they're, where I put 10,000, you know, 10,000 earnest money, 20,000 earnest money. Like, it, like I just sign it and send it in. Like, I don't care. Cause I know within that time period, I can back out for any reason. I'll get all my money back, walk away, scratch free. Okay. So as long as you have that inspection mm -hmm. contingent in there, you should be, you, you should be safe, but Hey, you know what? Um, I'm not giving you any kind of legal advice here. So check with your attorney, blah, blah, blah. So, um, now after, now after you lock it up, so you, you are, you are have these buyers in your pocket, right, Chris? Yes, sir. Okay. You, you, you sent your buyers to come out there, walk, and then it was done, ready to yeah. go. Yeah, he was ready to go. I sent it out at uh, 178. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Sent it out at 178. I had it under contract for 160. Um, one guy, he, he walked it. He came in too low, and that, wouldn't, that didn't work. And then my, my actual buyer who closed on it, he walked it five, six minutes. He was like, I'll take it. What, what number do we need to be at? Uh, I was at one set. I was at one seventy. He negotiated down. He said, "Well, let's." We met at one sixty six, and like I said, it was my first deal. I just wanted to, like you say, when that first deal, you just want to get it done. Yep, you know, that's right. So you get for for your own mental, you know, um, it's not really you're not really worried about the, the the dollar amount at that time. You just all the hard work and the and the learning and the you know the stuff, the trials that you go through. You just want it to finally pay off. So. I, I was, it was six K. I was, I was happy. He was happy. Everybody won. Chris, dude, I, dude, bro. I agree with you. 100. What do 1000%. I get people email me, um, and DM on Instagram and say, Hey Kong, you know what? I mean, my first deal, this guy's trying to cheat me. I'm going to make this X amount. I, I like, forget it. I don't want it. Dude, John, John, my first student, Chris, same mindset. He said, Kong, I'm not worried about how much I make on my first deal because I think his first deal was only like, 2500 bucks bro and i get so <laughs> many people give me crap for that oh kong he pays you 35 g's and he made 2500 on his first deal right so 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 i, I he, they're like dude, dude that doesn't make sense but look but when i talk to john dude he said kong i can care less if i make one dollar on my first deal because what he got was the process once yes. you know how to make one dollar you can yeah. do you can make it you can make a hundred thousand dollar a million dollar because you already know the process of how to recreate and do it again. Now John is off doing his 10th, it's 12 deals. And on his third deals, dude, he made, I think he made 40, 46,000 or something like that, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cause for him, bro, just like you. And just like when I first started, man, I just like, I, I, I just want to know the process. Cause I know once I know how to do it, then I can duplicate and do it again, again. Like I can make that again, that shoes, that box, whatever it is, again and again. When you don't know the process, it sounds confusing and, and that's what's holding you back. So now, Chris, what was the rehab? I forgot to ask you, man. What was the rehab on it? Yeah, the rehab on that uh, was a, it was about 40K. 
forty thousand dollars. Okay, now in okay. this neighbor in this neighborhood, Chris, with the with that kind of forty k rehab, I figure that stainless steel appliances, granite countertop, yes. all of that, like nice. Yeah, granite, stainless, granite or quartz, stainless steel, laminate floors, you know, new bathroom, new, you know, paint. It also needed like a, a half of the roof was bad, so it needed like new roof. It was, yeah, so it required about 40K, 40 okay. k for real. Gotcha. Now, Chris, did you have any constructions, background, experience? Just, just, I, I just want to know how did you come uh, up with the 40K? Well, yeah, well, well I, I don't personally, but like I said, my dad was always doing, you know, he's a landlord and uh you know doing fix and flips and stuff like that so i kind of was always watching i was always watching his best friend is a i mean he does awesome awesome work for like uh con uh you know construction and stuff like this so um yeah i know the numbers i know the numbers i know what it costs mm. I, you know 25 dollars per square foot I, I do all my calculations you know like that Gotcha. So I'm really, I'm really pinpoint with, you know, with my, with what I'm sending out to my buyers too. Cause I, I, I'm, I'm looking at it from the buyer's point of view and then I'm looking at it from the seller's point of view as well. It's kind of like both sides. Gotcha, man. So for those that are listening that, Hey, that you start out, you're like, Colin, I, I don't know anything. I don't have experience. I don't know any, all the costs, anything like that. Listen, I was the exact, I was in your exact same shoes, okay? I couldn't even put a door handle together. I couldn't even tell you how much the door costs. Like, I cannot tell you, okay? No, nothing. The best way for you is pick up the phone, call some local contractor, and start talking to them and start getting some price quote from the contractor. Just say, hey, my partner and I, we have, we, we have a property looking to fix and flip here. Just want to know what's the cost of painting the outside, the inside, the flooring, and they will give you a rough estimate. And that's all you need to get a ball figure of when you talk to seller, you know, exactly how roughly how much thing costs. Okay. So, um, let me see here. So Chris, you got out, you put your, so your buyer puts down 8,000 non-refundable. And then mm -hmm. let me see here, man. And how soon, uh, how quick, how quick was the closing? Uh, closing, uh, for the first deal, the, yeah, yeah. The closing for the first deal yeah, it bro. took about, uh, we were like eight, eight days, like eight days. Eight days we would have closed a lot faster, but my buyer, he, he had, he went to Mexico and then, yeah. And when he got back, he just closed it. It took about eight days. Dude. Nice bro. Dude, Chris, man, I want to say, bro, congrats for it. Dude, you started back like in, man, you started September. back in August of, Dude, it almost took you a, it almost took you a year. Yeah, I'm right about yeah, like around 11, 12 months, right, right around that part. Yeah, well, because I'm September is when I it was conceived, and then July was my first deal. So yeah, that was it. It was it was a grind, and before that, I had probably like four deals under contract that kind of just fell apart. Just you know, just because I was failing forward, I was just making mistakes and um, locking stuff up too high or whatever it may be, but it all paid off like with this last deal that, that I did 50k on it was it was amazing absolutely bro dude man um dude that is a long dude because a lot of times what it is is you guys it takes so long like you start losing momentum the motivated the motivations those, those things just kind of fade away but the one that hangs in there man is the one that's going to get the 50g <laughs> so yeah. great job bro dude it took me six months bro it took me six months and those six months bro was dude those six months was a lot a lot of praying i was praying um obviously that's, taking massive action but i was praying a lot too bro i was i was praying a lot i was like god please show me the light yeah. show me the way help Man. me push through these obstacles yeah this last this last one dude i was i mean because i already had one fall apart for 50k so i was praying i was like god just let me get this fifty thousand dollar deal please and, um, and like, again, that one, that one was through a realtor, uh, through Instagram, believe mm. it or not. Um, I had, I actually reached out to a realtor that I, I know, um, I know a few realtors out here and I, I just pretty much reach out to them. Hey man, if, if you know, if you have anything like a pocket listing that, you know, needs a lot of work, a lot of rehab, and you don't want to put on the market, it's not going to pass inspections, things like that. We're going to close fast on it. You can keep the whole 6% commission. And I also pay you a fee outside if you're if you're willing to, if you're willing to do that. Hey, they jumped on it. She, uh, uh, I, I I gave her an offer on the house. The house ARV for like, like 
500,000 and um, the sellers wanted 365 at first. I uh, came, came back at 325, we ended up at 330. Uh, I knew immediately it was a home run, even when she, uh, she, she kind of brought it to me because she said, yeah, Chris, this house is, it needs a lot of work. It's a full gut. It's in a very nice, very nice uh, established area in Sacramento. And um, I knew immediately it was a home run. I, and I told her, hey, look, we, I need to get this deal. I need this. And we made it happen. They, they accepted my offer at 330. And the house needed about 45000 in rehab. And um, I packed the house out with my buyers, man. I had like 12 of them there at once. And it, the, you should have seen the realtor's face. She was just like, she was like in awe, like, oh, this dude's serious. He really has investors here. And these, the, you just see the investors looking left to right. They see that there's competition. And um, I sent it out at 368. And uh, at 368, uh, I mean, I had a guy who, who drove by the house. And he didn't even walk in. He was like, hey, I want it. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey, I was like, I already knew. I was like, hey, if a dude is like trying to jump on it like that, you know, he, I can get more for this. So that was a Friday when he tried to jump on it. I, I told him, hey, well, you got to wait till Monday when I'm going to be showing the house to everybody, give everybody a fair chance. Um, so 12 of my guys showed up and two of them got into it like a bidding war. They bid it up to 375, two of them. And then the two dudes, one of the dudes was, he said, dude, I wanted 380. Boom. Got it done. Dang, yeah. bro. Freaking hustle. I like yeah. that, dude. One, one hour later, uh, you know, I told him, hey, you need to put down a, you know, 4%. He put down $14,000 one hour later into the title uh, company. And I was like, man, I think this is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> dude, bro. Hustle, man. Love that, dude. So, Chris. When I first started, for those that don't know, when I, when I first started, man, a lot of my deals are through Realtor. Building relationship, calling them up, just, just, exactly, just exactly how Chris just said it. That's exactly how I, I pitch, and that's exactly how I talk to these agents. And look, look Realtors is not something that you call up and it happens right away. You know, it's an over, over time building that relationship uh, with them. And uh, let them know that you're, um, and obviously let them know that you're the real deal. You know, when they send you the deal, like make an offer. And when you do, you know, obviously trying to get it done. And uh, eventually, you know, the next thing, they'll bring you more and more and more. Now, Chris, yeah. these realtors, do they know that you are a wholesaler? Uh, these, yeah, yeah. They, the, the, well, they know, they know I'm going to be assigning it. Mm. Um, the, the, I know the first one, he knew I was going to be assigning it. The second one, I actually had a relationship with this realtor. Uh, so she knew that I was, uh, I was going to be assigning it uh, as a wholesaler. Yes, she understood that. But most of the time when I am talking to realtors, I let them know, hey, it's a partnership mm. and we're going to be just taking a different name uh, at, at, at closing, you know, just for tax purposes, like you say. Um, and yeah, it works out. So Good, good. And Chris, I um, thank you so much for pointing that out. For those of you Listen, once you build a relationship with this, uh, the realtor, right? And if they ask you, right, then yes, you can be open when you build a really good, solid relationship mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And when you are first, I would just say, just like Chris just mentioned, you know, my partner and I looking to fix and flip some properties in the area, right? Act like, you know, you have partners. So when you, when you have multiple people go out, those are all your investor partners that's, that, that you don't know which one you're going to partner with uh, to get this deal done. So um, don't say wholesale, okay? Because most realtors do not know what that is. And, you know, they do know assignment. They're like, hey, I, you know, so use the word assign. I'm going to assign it over to another partner or take another LC. Just like whatever Chris said, you guys. But until you build that sol solid relationship, just don't say that you are uh, wholesaling. You're going to lock it up. You're going to wholesale it. It's going to sound scammy to them and they don't want to mm -hmm. deal with it and all of that, okay? So anyways, man, we're going to wrap this up. You guys, thanks to, thank you so much for listening. But Chris, how do people connect with you, man? Uh, yeah, you can actually connect with me on uh, either Instagram. Um, uh, and you can get uh, contact me at my name, Chris, C-H-R-I-S underscore Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N. And then you can also get a hold of me on Facebook. Uh, and it's Chris Gordon, my name. Got it. Okay. 
Now, Chris, any last word, man, that you want to say to anyone that are just, you know, want to be on, <laughs> want to be on the show. I know a lot want to be on the show. And if you want, yeah. if you just recently closed your first wholesale deal, shoot me an email, show me the money, picture the checks or, or the wire transfer, shoot an email over to wholesale to millions at gmail.com. what you got to say, Chris? Dude, all I got to say to all you guys that are out there that are watching, I was literally in the same position. Like I was just like, man, I didn't know what my passion was in life, trying to figure it out. And when I came across wholesaling, I was like, man, I found something that I can like a real trade, a real skill set that I can have for the rest of my life, really. And you just got to stay on fire. You got to stay persistent. You got to like be hungry. You got to like do the things every day that are going to get you better and get you closer to that deal. Um, I mean, I'm watching, you know, Kong do $126,000 assignment fees. That's motivation, dude. I mean, it's like, dude, if, if, if Kong could do this when he was, you know, I know your story, dude. And that just drove me, man, to just like, hey, lock in, do what everybody's, do what everybody else isn't doing. So you can like reap the benefits of uh, being successful, man. And it, it paid off, man. Like I said, the last two months, 45 days. I'm at $56,000 in assignment fees and it's, it's, it's life changing money, man. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to grow it. I'm trying to scale. I'm looking at your program with the VAs and I'm like, Hey, I need to probably get a VA and, and maybe uh, one, I got an acquisition buddy. He, I mean, a guy who's a beast and I think he'll be a really good acquisition guy. So I'm, you know, I'm looking to scale a little bit, a little bit and just uh, get to that. I want to be one of those six figure a month guys myself, man. Hell to the yeah, bro. Chris, so for those of you who haven't followed me on Instagram, hit me up on IG, go to Kong, K-H-A-N-G dot W-T-M. So I don't know if you've seen this on the story yet, Chris. I just post that. Mm -hmm. So for the VA, dude, literally, I think it was just a week or a week and a half ago, my wife personally get on the Zoom, hand over the VA to, um, and I don't even remember his name, hand over the VA to him, bro. Just hire one. Dude, six appointment. In nine days, six oh. appointment in nine days. Dude, this VA that my wife, dude, she's handpick them. She, she handpick them, self-train them. Dude, because all the VA service company out there, it's not like ours. The re Let me tell you why. We do the business. She knows exactly how to train these VA up. No, no other VA service out there is a real estate actively doing the business, all right, because they don't know how to train. Right. And they actually, they don't even train your VA. So if you dude, if you guys are looking for solid real estate VA to grow your real estate empire, take it to the next level, man. Then uh, shoot an email over to sales. S A L E S. Okay. At B A S dream team.com. The wife one helps you build your own VA stream team, man. So, um, I know that she just hired, um, and dude, they come, they go very quickly. So um, I know that she just uploaded a video on some new VA that she's, uh, that, that she's trained. It takes her about three weeks to get them trained up really solid. And what these VA do, th their main job is to qualify, filter the leads, and to cold call for you. Whatever list it is, once you hire them, they become your employee, which means you train them on whatever you want them to do. But when they are handed over to you, they already know how to talk to the seller because my wife used the King Kong script to train them. So they know how to talk, qualify, filter the leads, set the appointment. If you want them to cold call, they already know how to cold call, starting the pitch and all of that for you. Because, I, because you probably know as much as, like, just like me, Chris, it takes the most time out of your day is when you're actually qualifying, filter the lead. Because you got to dig yeah. through the dirt, right? You got to talk to so many people to get that one. Uh, to get that one deal. So these VA would do it for you. Dude, the English is like probably better than mine, bro. <laughs> man, I, I heard them, man. I, I saw all of them, man, on, on your uh, last few videos. They're, they're amazing, dude. They're, they know the business. They know what to say to the sellers. They build rapport. And uh, man, I'm just, I think I'm going to have to sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll, man. So shoot an email over there. Elaine, Elaine is a VA. She's an operation manager. She'll reach out, answer any question or any concern you have uh, before you actually commit uh, and want to jump on, man. But uh, we would love to have you on board, bro. I know the wife would love to um, take your, you know, help you take your business, bro, to the next level and grow your real estate empire. Anyways, dude, Chris, I want to say thank you so much for your time, bro. I, I dude. 
stay connected. Um, Chris, also do is shoot me in DM, bro. I think I think I, I got your your DM and your Facebook. I'll put that in the description for those of you who's uh, who's listening. Uh, and Chris, I want to say thank you so much. If you're new to the channel, you guys, smash the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so when I go live or I upload a new video, you get notified. And also, too, if you recently closed your first wholesale deal, shoot me an email, show me the money. And you guys heard it from Chris, man. He he stuck in there. He hang in there. 56 G's later, and I know he's going to take it to the six figure a month, bro. Keep me posted on your success. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it, man. It's a pleasure. Honor, dudes. Until next time, you guys. Ciao.